Well, I had originally brought the uh, cylinder head down to the basement to work on it down on the workbench, and then today I figured I was going to have to haul it up here to put it on the truck to bring it to the machine shop anyways. Well, it actually looks like uh, one of the other valves came up. I'll take a look from the other side here, but... Uh, yeah, it looks like one of the other ones closed from spring tension. Just the uh, mystery oil, I guess, sitting on there and working its way down. Got to it. Let's do a quick check. No, that one's still. No, that one's still sticking some. That one's free, free, stuck, free, 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 and a little stuck. That's the one that popped up when I was taking the head off originally. So this is the worst one. You can tell by the noise. Okay, this is the uh, front of the motor here, and so we're going to call this cylinder number one, and I'm going to remove this valve first. Now, I noticed that the cap or retainer on this one is different than this one. I'm not sure until I get it apart, but this might actually be what they call a roto cap, uh, which if it is, I'll show you when I get that apart. Just get a load of the stuff that's still falling out of the uh, exhaust port here. I mean, it's unbelievable. It's just a pile of oxide. In case you've never used one of these before, here's the basic setup. Your uh, pin here pushes on the valve head. and Then that clamp, you adjust the width so it snugly fits around that cap. And now when I pull down on this ratcheting handle, it will... Uh, it will compress the spring and expose the keepers. All right, something, something screwy here. I can't get the valve springs to compress. Putting all the force of this spring compressor on and it's not working. First I thought maybe it had something to do with that being the strange rotocap type design. So then I went to this, what appears to be just a regular one and the same thing. What's happening is that I'm clamping down the, the, the C-clamp part of the actual valve spring compressor is actually spreading rather than compressing the spring. So that's uh, not what I expected. Alright, I got an old socket and I put it on here and I tapped to see whether or not maybe this was stuck. It seems to be broken free. I don't know if it was stuck or not, but it seems broken free. Now I can push down with my screwdriver and you can see I can actually push the spring down and the valve keepers and the stem are staying up so I'm going to reapply the valve spring compressor and see what happens. Yeah that was it. Looks like a charm now. So now you just get those little keepers out of there which uh, I use a screwdriver because if you get your fingers in there and for some reason this clamp would slip off well you're going to really regret it. All right, so now I take the tension off slowly and I'll be able to take that uh, cap off. All right, everything's really oily, so I donned some gloves. Four jars, one per cylinder. I like to keep all the valves in the same together. So I don't have to worry about uh, mixing the intake and the exhaust valves up because they're identical. I mean, they're, they're different, different size, so they'll be obvious. The uh, springs are actually um, um, identical. So you can interchange the springs. Intake and exhaust springs on this model are identical. That's not always the case, but it is in this case. And as far as the caps go, it's clear that these uh, strange looking caps, which look almost like, uh, as I thought, maybe a roto cap type design, they actually are uh, only on the exhaust valves. So we got exhaust, intake, intake, exhaust, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's definitely uh, the roto cap design. It's a two-piece cap, and what that's supposed to do, if, if my understanding is correct, is every time the uh, valve opens and closes, this is supposed to cause a slight rotation to the valve. So I 
you know, I guess that almost would give it kind of like a self-cleaning property or help it clean itself of carbon. I'm not sure. But anyways, uh, that's basically what that is. I think this is actually supposed to come apart to be serviced. Uh, I'm going to leave it the way it is and uh, let my expert machinist take a look at it because I don't even know if they still use these. Uh, he may recommend changing them out. I'll talk to him about it. So I'll clean it up a little bit and it goes in the jar. Now I'm going to tap the valve out. Of course the ones that aren't stuck bad are going to practically drop out. And the one like this one that's stuck real bad, we're going to have to drive out. And I actually peened over the uh, mushroom, the end of that valve stem pretty bad. I mean, it doesn't, what I mean by pretty bad is enough that when I drive it out, it's probably going to damage the valve guide. So that probably wasn't a good idea. Although new valve guides are about like uh, $4 a piece for this engine. Uh, so I, I'm thinking I'm going to probably have new valve guides installed. I'm using a punch now to drive this down to try and minimize the uh, amount of damage I do through the end of the valve stem. If the valves end up being uh, usable, then he'll be able to just grind the uh, edge there of the valve stem when he's uh, regrinding them if they end up needing a valve grind. Well, valves are longer than I thought they were. Huh. Well, this is what the valve's supposed to look like. This nice shiny area. and eee. Rust anyone? Oh, my jars are too small. All right, I have to get some more jars. Intake valve comes off the same way. Uh, the only difference is on the intake valve, the cap is just a regular cap. It's not a roto cap. And now I'm going to drop that valve out. And then basically repeat the process all the way down. And I won't bother shooting the video unless I get to something interesting. Like this valve. Well, I did want to show you this. Now, here's how this is supposed to come out. This is uh, the intake valve on number one here. It slid right out, no tapping necessary, and if you look at it, it's a pretty darn good shape. Just end up lapping that one, it might be all right. But anyways, I move on. This is uh, something of interest. This is the only exhaust valve. Or is it the, yeah, this is the only exhaust valve that came right out, wasn't stuck at all. And the reason why I think it's interesting is because this is the cylinder that had that weird extension on the spark plug welded onto it. And somebody online sent me a message and after seeing the video and said that that extension is on there to keep the spark plug from oil fouling. I guess that was like some kind of a remedy or a fix if you had a uh, cylinder that was blowing oil and you wanted to keep the plug from fouling, you put the extension on there. I don't know. But it's interesting to note that that's that same cylinder. So I wonder if this cylinder had a problem already with oil fouling the plug. And maybe that's why this cylinder didn't have the exhaust valve seeped up. Maybe there was a lot more oil in that combustion chamber than should have been. Well, I'll take one last look before we're off to the machine shop at the valve seats. Uh, bad. Good. Good. Bad. Bad. Good. Good. Bad. Oh, look at that. A chunk of something in there. <laughs> wow. All right. Decided I'll keep all the keepers and valve, uh, valve springs and the uh, uh, caps in the jars. And I labeled them one, two, three, and four for the cylinders. And then came up with my little uh, idea here for a caddy for my actual valves. Label one, two, three, and four. Oh, by the way, this is also a good, you can use this for a six cylinder. Just one last look at all the crap that fell out of those exhaust ports while I was banging on that. <laughs> wow. All right. I'll load it up. I'm off to see the wizard.